Well, the Congress Party was in Delhi in power for 15 years. Uh, what you see in Delhi, the modern physical infrastructure, uh, is a legacy of those 15 years of Sheila Dixit and the Congress regime and administration. Uh, we had a severe setback uh, in the last two elections, but we will bounce back. Uh, and mark my words, the election result in Delhi will be a surprise. Don't write the Congress off in Delhi prematurely. Coming to the economy, had the Congress been in power, what could it have done differently? Well, uh, I think what has happened in the economy is we have had six consecutive quarters uh, of GDP growth decline. Six consecutive quarters. This is quite unprecedented. Uh, we have come down from 8.1% to 4.5%. Uh, the government has worked very hard uh, to, uh, to, uh, to achieve this. Uh, retardation in growth, demonetization, uh, a botched up implementation of GST and most importantly I think a fear, an atmosphere of fear and uncertainty that governs the investors uh, and no country is going to be uh, growing rapidly only on the strength of foreign investment. It's not FDI, it's DI, it's domestic investment that counts. But I think there is a great deal of uncertainty, there's a great deal of fear uh, in the domestic investors. And until this sentiment becomes positive, I don't see the economy reviving. Now we are seeing uh, a new phenomenon, we are seeing inflationary uh, pressures building up in the economy. Uh, people are beginning to use the word stagflation. Uh, I won't go so far as yet. But uh, certainly in terms of food item inflation, uh, onions, potatoes, tomatoes for example, we are looking at now inflation increasing and inflation is increasing at a time when growth is decreasing. You had said that blindly opposing Narendra Modi won't help, but is there any other way out for the opposition? No, we are, you know, we are ma we made our voices heard in uh, within parliament, there are public protests, particularly universities, particularly among the students and the younger generation. I think there is genuine fear, there is genuine anger, there is consternation uh, and this is a government clearly that, that doesn't like to listen. You know, it's a, it's a tr one way traffic, it's a one way communication, uh, monkey bath uh, is monkey bath. It's not listening to people, it's only hectoring to people. V.K. Krishnamenon was often criticized within the Congress for taking the party too much to the left. Is there a left versus right divide in the Congress today? Well, you know, Mr. Mr. Krishnamenon was a creature of his times uh, and the, the creature of his times both in England as well as in India. Uh, he, was, he was very much a product uh, of a Fabian England, uh, of a socialist England, as indeed was Pandit Nehru. And that's one of the reasons why Nehru and Krishnamenon became so close and they became ideological uh, soulmates, as it were. Uh, but he was never a communist. He was never a communist, although he was elected as an independent candidate in 69 and 1971 with communist support. Uh, he was not a communist, but the communists loved him. Uh, of course, he was, uh, he was a left of center. Uh, you know, he was a left of center ideologue, was deeply ideological, believed in the public sector as a commanding heights, deeply suspicious of the United States, uh, much more uh, forgiving and much more accommodating of the United Kingdom, and of course, certainly enamored of the Soviet Union. Uh, but you know, this was. We are talking of the 40s and we are talking of the 50s, a completely different times. The geopolitics was different. The Cold War was at its peak. And I think uh, he really wanted uh, an India uh, which was not wedded to any of the big powers. It was not wedded to the two superpowers or the two blocks, but was able to have an independent voice. And the fact is that when Mr. Menon uh, was uh, our UN envoy. Uh, he spoke independently. He was what I have described in my book, an equal opportunity offense giver. Nobody was spared uh, the power of his tongue or his pen. Would you say the Congress party tries to shun ownership of Krishna Menon for some of his follies, such as the India's debacle in the 1962 war? Well, uh, uh, Mr. Krishna Menon 
left the Congress party in 1967. He resigned from the Congress party uh, because he was not given a ticket to contest from the seat in Bombay, which he had won in 57 and 62. He then contested as an independent candidate in 67. Uh, he lost and then he contested as an independent candidate in 69 from West Bengal, Midnapur and then he contested in 71 as an independent candidate from Trivandrum, the same seat that Shashi Tharoor uh, now represents and he won with the communist support. Um, his relationship with the Congress however was much deeper than what happened in 67. His relationship was with Mr. Nehru. Uh, his relationship with the Congress came through his relationship with Mr. Nehru. Uh, he was, as I said, Mr. Nehru's confidant, con he was his aide, he was his minister, he was his envoy, but he was his soulmate. Uh, they wrote numerous letters to each other, they bared their souls, uh, they, they spoke freely to each other. And yes, uh, what Krishnamanan was the defense minister in 1962, at the time of the Chinese war, the debacle, the debacle that India had. And finally, on the 7th of November 1962, Nehru was very reluctant, but he was forced by his party uh, to seek uh, and, uh, and obtain uh, and approve uh, Krishnamanan's resignation uh, from the Union Cabinet as Defence Minister. But Krishna Menon has not been forgotten because I think to look at him only from the lens of 1962 does grave injustice to this many splendid personality. So as we face a climate crisis, what are some of the immediate policy changes or reforms which are also practicable that you would recommend to the government? I think one of the things that I would like to stress is that this is a government that would like to appear internationally as to be very responsible uh, in terms of uh, its contributions uh, to combating global warming, but its own domestic policies for the environment uh, leave a lot to be desired. There's been a lot of loosening of environmental laws a lot of liberalization of environmental regulations and therefore there is the split personality as far as the government is concerned. Internationally it speaks the language of environmental stewardship but domestically in the name of ease of doing business it is actually giving a go by to many worthwhile and very badly needed environmental regulations and standards and institutions.